in combination with the hard store. Uh, you know that there are some factors influencing the eff effectiveness of toric intraocular lenses. You have to place them accurately. You have to measure the uh, preoperative pre astigmatism uh, accurately. And of course, there is the issue of the rotational stability of the lens. And we know that if there is a certain amount of misalignment, you will lose some of the correction of the astigmatism. So the accurate astigmatism axis determination and the alignment is mandatory for, for a good result. Now here you have a setup of the SMI surgery guidance systems where you have actually the, the reference unit that measures the, uh, the astigmatism before the surgery with the typical landmarks of the eye in terms of uh, iris features and limbal vessels. And then this is uh, loaded into the surgery pilot and through the microscope integrated display then the surgeon gets this view in his uh, microscope uh, uh, oculars. Now, the, the idea of the SMI surgery guidance is that it can help the surgeon with his guidance for intraocular lens implantation in terms of centration of lenses, multifocal lenses, and in terms of alignment of the uh, toric intraocular lenses. And this is then the picture that you can have in your oculars. Now, the, the reference uh, units of the SMI can now be actually, the, these data can also be obtained now, acquired with the, with the lens star units that you all know. So the preoperative measurement then consists of the chirometry based on the uh, 32 uh, measurement points of the lens star and the detection of the limbus and the scleral uh, vessels uh, landmarks. That then is loaded into this kind of uh, surgery pilot, the surgery planning program, as you can see here. And then the surgeon can actually plan his, uh, his axis for the incision, for the paracentesis, the size of his uh, capsular axis, and also the alignment axis of the toric, the toric lens. And this then is displayed in his, uh, in his field during the, the, during the surgery. Now the lens star, as you know, has a very high accuracy for measurement of stigmatism because of the 32 uh, measurement points that are available. It's a non-contact uh, measurement, provides the determination of the cave values and the limbus location, uh, as you can see here. And this high resolution picture then is combined with the limbal vessels uh, features and the iris features. Now then, in the field of the Lenstar machine, there is a, a separate sheet where the SMI export button is indicated. And there is a license required to export the data of this uh, acquirement to a USB stick that then is loaded in actually the surgery, surgery pilot. You receive feedback concerning the quality of the images that you have acquired. And if the measurement is usable, you get this blue button. And when it's not usable, the button is not, is not highlighted. You can then export all the uh, data that you have acquired. And that contains wide to wide measurements, anterior chamber depth, as what you can acquire normally with the, with the Lenstar. And in addition, then all the digital data on the uh, on the landmarks of the limbus and of the iris, and so on. This then is transferred in a file. You see here the file, and this file is then exported using a USB stick to the, uh, to the surgery guidance um, uh, feature here, the surgery pilot, as you can see here. You connect the USB stick, and then you can, of course, plan your position of the incision, as I told you, the size and position of the rexes, and if you use a toric lens, the, uh, the alignment axis. Now here you can see how it works. So you acquire the picture. Uh, there is an indication if you have the, the right patient. Uh, so if the, the, the two pictures match actually under the microscope and that you have obtained, you then can plan your incision. If you want to do it on the steep axis, uh, you can put it here. Um, if you want to put it on the 12 o'clock, you put it here. This is the indication for your site. Uh, ports for your paracentesis, and then you can plan your rexes as you can see here. You want to make it larger, you make it six, or smaller, you make it five. And if you want to make uh, uh, an alignment for the toric IOL, you can see here the indication of your toric IOL uh, alignment axis. Now we have uh, very uh, limited experience now with the Hark Shrine because this became only available a couple of weeks ago to us. 
So we have used it in 28 eyes with some uh, toric IOLs, some multifocal IOLs, and then multifocal multifocal toric IOLs, where we took first a, a preoperative lens star measurement and then imported these into the surgery, uh, surgery pilot, and then the microscope overlay was, was placed on, on the eye. Actually, in all eyes, we could achieve uh, an image, and only in one, uh, one eye, no lens star uh, measurement could be, uh, could be performed. And here you can see how it, uh, how it works. So you have the information from the, uh, from the reference unit, from the lens star in this case, uh, this is placed on the, uh, on the picture that you see in the microscope, and here you can see the, uh, the, the, the centration and how he's, going to find, how he's going to find the landmarks that match between your acquired picture of the lens star and the picture that is uh, in real time under your microscope. And if the fit is complete, if the, the, the software is, uh, is satisfied with the, with the matching, you finally get this picture and you know that you are in the right position in terms of uh, angulation of the, of the landmarks of the eye. You can use this, as I told you, for the uh, accurate positioning of the, uh, of the incisions that you make in the eye. So here you can see an example where the uh, incision is, uh, is indicated around, uh, what is it, around 100, uh, 100 degrees. Um, where you can make then uh, very accurately, if you want, on the steep axis, your, your main incision um, to decrease potentially your astigmatism. In terms of your side ports, you can indicate the side ports where you want to make them, in this case here, and use them to your advantage. Uh, for the rexes, you can see here the rexes indicated in the, uh, in the field of view. And you can use that as a kind of, uh, of guidance for making your, your optimal uh, rexus size here. So you can make it 4, 4.5, 5, 5.5, 6, whatever you want. Here you can see the buttons where you can change it. And so this overlay is projected in your, in your microscope uh, view of the, uh, of the microscope that you are using. And this is compatible with, uh, with all microscopes, actually. This is an example of the optimal alignment of the toric IOLs. You can see here the uh, alignment axis, and actually there are two small axes uh, uh, next to it because we all know that sometimes these uh, alignment marks are not exactly uh, on the axis, but they can be parallel to it. So this is an excellent way of uh, creating an optimal alignment of your, of your toric uh, intraocular lens. Also for multifocal lenses, um, if you wish, you can center the lens on the, uh, on the rings that will be projected into your, into your uh, screen, as you can see here. So this is the, the middle of your center of the screen. And you can then actually you, you, you can centrate also these rings on the, uh, on the limbus. But if you wish, you can center it also on the dilated pupil. That's uh, always a choice that you can make yourself according to your Specification. This was your was a toric multifocal, so you can see here the uh, the, the alignment um, marks on the lens and the nice parallel alignment with the um, with the lens itself. Uh, we have looked at our personal, let's say, uh, error in our manual marking technique, and it was recently uh, recently published. It was a manual marking technique where we use a, a bubble marker, as you as you can see here, in uh, combination with the um, with the Mendes ring, as you can see here in this video, which I believe is, uh, is, is, is a nice way of, of actually marking your alignment axis if you are using a, a manual technique. And we were very curious to see what our mistakes were in using these techniques. And actually, the mistakes can occur, of course, in, in the three steps. They can occur due to cyclotorsion, to the horizontal placement of your reference marks, to the placement of your alignment marks, but also to the actual alignment of the lens. And actually, if you look at the sum of errors, this is on average around five degrees, but there can be a deviation as high as 10 degrees, actually. So in, from the last two weeks, we have uh, pooled our, our data, actually, to see what we could do uh, with this system as a, as, a, as a first kind of evaluation. We have included here some toric phacic IOLs, toric uh, artiflux lenses. And you could see that for this lens, where there can be no post-operative rotation, actually, the, uh, the error of alignment here was very low, was a mean of 1.8 degrees. 
For the toric pseudophagic IOLs, we had a 2.7 degrees, which is an average lower than we had with our uh, manual marking, uh, two and a half degrees lower. We had one eye here where there was a misalignment, but that could have been a post-operative rotation because we have not measured uh, on different time uh, points and we have not measured uh, immediately after the, after the surgery. So in conclusion, uh, I believe that in terms of the current manual marking techniques that we use, uh, we see an error of around five degrees. The eye tracking uh, guided surgery, we believe with this first results may increase its accuracy. There's a wide field of applications and customization, rexes, uh, incisions, positioning and centration of uh, multifocal or multifocal lenses can be used in teaches, teaching for using the capsular rexes to our residents, which is an excellent tool, I would believe. And uh, I, uh, I believe certainly that the registration link from the Hark strike unit to the SMI optimizes the cataract workflow because you can now take all the measurements using only one machine and you don't need a separate machine. With that, I thank you for your attention. And I think we have time for a few questions for Dr. Knights. Yes. As far as I'm informed, at the current moment, it is not possible to center, center it on the, on the line, on the visual axis. Yeah. Could you please take the microphone because I cannot hear you. Okay. Do? The, the question is how the machine fix the torsional effect. Now what is in the machine here is the tracking technology that is used for Exheimer laser uh, surgery and which is provided by the company SMI. So this is the, the, the way it uses it are the iris recognition factors, uh, features in combination with the details of the, of, the, of the limbal vessels. And this is how it compensates for the, for the torsion of the angle as you have seen in the registration in the video. And Rudy, your, your impression of the accuracy of the rexus, because it's it doesn't take into account the cornea, it's just an image that's projected right on the anterior capsule, is that right? Uh, the, the, the correction of it? I... The, the accuracy of the rexus. Well, the accuracy of the, the, accu accuracy of the rexus, you mean if it's really is 5 millimeter or 5.5 millimeter? Right. Right. Okay, we have done some, some calculations in this and implemented some correction factors which are based on the refractive index of the, of the cornea and which probably should also be, um, uh, should be corrected for the anterior chamber depth that you have in a certain eye. Uh, we've done some studies and they are actually at the moment they are within uh, 0 0.1 uh, millimeter. Not quite femtosecond surgery but pretty close. <laughs> okay. Any other questions for Dr. Knights? Over here. To the orange system, uh, the U.S. orange system. If it is comparable, or what's is, is it similar to the orange? Uh, it's not a company, but uh, but I know <laughs> there's a, a system called the orange system. We can't get it in Europe, but they like, got it in, in the U.S. As far as I know, the, the orange system works with. I don't. I don't personally use it. Works with the wavefront detection uh, from from the intraoperative astigmatism, and that's a different approach as what you see here. Okay, uh, just basically, what does SMI stand for? I'm not uh, as far as I remember correctly, it's sensomotoric instruments. Is that correct, Oliver? Sensomotoric instruments. Okay. Sensomotoric instruments. Yeah. Okay. Other questions? 